This is the Airtel S23. So many of my viewers don't want me to rest just because of this phone. Especially this user, Depreci. I was respecting myself minding my business. He made it his project to disturb my quiet life with numerous comments about this Airtel S23. Well done, no. Even Yahaya Sada, whom I trusted so much, joined the queue with those who are disturbing my life over this phone. Now that I have it, you better have good specs because I will insult the life out of you. Don't worry guys, I won't be biased in this review, it's just that Itel has been a bad boy. Before I continue, these are the specs I will use to judge this phone. It has a 50 megapixel main camera, 8 gig of RAM with support for memory fusion of another 8 gig, and a color changing back design for the mystery white color. Unlike the Itel S18 and S18 Pro, you don't need to run any system updates to activate RAM expansion. It took me over 4 hours to run this update on the Itel S18 simply because I want to activate Memory Fusion. So this is a little upgrade to the Itel S23. You just have to go to Special Function in the setting to activate RAM expansion. Before I continue, let me admit that Itel has broken a record here. Not inter-brand record though, so you don't conclude that they have done something that Infinis and Techno have not done yet. This is the first time ever they are featuring a 50 megapixel main camera. This is the first time they are designing a color changing phone and this is the first time they are featuring a 128 gig of internal storage space. And before I forget, the price is 66,000 Naira for the 4 gig RAM variant and 76,000 Naira for the 8 gig RAM variant. Fine specs, but as good and tempting as these features are, there is something fishy about this phone. Itel is deliberately hiding the type of processor that powers this phone, so if you check the body of this packaging box, you will not find any information about the processor. But I checked the phone settings. Brothers and sisters, welcome to Unisoc TCSOC, an entry-level processor. <sighs> as ugly as that may sound, that is my least problem for now. Let me show you what's inside the packaging box. The packaging looks so much like Itel packaging. Don't ask me what I mean. From here, you can see that you get free data offer from MTN, 9Mobile, Airtel, and Glow. Inside the box, you will find the phone wrapped in this fine material. This is the mystery white color design, the one that changes color under sunlight. I will test that in a moment. The other design is starry black. The next item in the box is the protective case. It is not as flexible as the ones Techno and Infinix normally use. To me, this is not ideal. Next is the SIM eject pin. I would have said that the SIM eject pin is too regular, but who SIM eject pin help? More frustrating is the 10 watt charger inside. This will charge the phone very slowly. More on this later. Then a Type-C charging cable and the usual made in a bad earpiece. Now this is the part that I've been longing to test. Will this mystery white color really change into pink once I expose it to sunlight? Let's find out. With these letters that I made out of ordinary paper, I'm already feeling skeptical about this process. Time to expose this phone to sun and here we go. Excellent. So I finally found one feature that I like about an Altair phone. Quite thoughtful. But don't mistake this for good design no. Is the design of the Altair S23 good? Maybe. It has a round camera model that houses two cameras and a dual flashlight. There's a design here that looks like a thought camera, but it's not. This design looks so much like the Vivo Y11 that was launched this year. It is okay to argue that the Vivo Y11 have one camera in the module, while the iTel has two. The thing is that on the iTel phone, one of the two cameras is not working. I blindfolded it, switched between all the camera modes, zoomed to infinity, Yet the camera, which is the only one I did not blindfold, works so perfectly. So just like the Vivo Y11, we can assume that the Itel S23 has one camera. I am not saying that Itel copied Vivo Y11's design. Why would I even say such a thing that can put me in trouble? What I'm trying to say is that this is not the first time that an Itel phone is looking like another phone. Think about the Itel S18, think about the Itel P40, just to name a few. All the cutouts are in their normal position. A SIM house with a long SIM tray on the left corner. The power button which doubles as a fingerprint scanner as well as the volume control buttons are on the right corner. Then the button comes with a speaker, a Type-C port, a microphone and an audio jack. One aspect of the design that makes sense is the weight. It feels so light, weighing only 192 gram. Then while it is not that comfortable to hold because it doesn't have curved edges, I would not forget to admire the position of the fingerprint scanner. It fits with your finger once you hold the phone. 
making it easy to unlock it. In some phones that I have reviewed, you will have to keep stretching your fingers just to access the power button. Overall, the design of this phone might seem okay to the regular eye, but to someone who understands quality design, I still have a lot of work to do here. It looks so much like a plastic phone. Plus, the front camera and the screen design features a water drop notch instead of a punch hole which would have been the first for iTel. Ok, let me repent and be serious for once in my life. Comparing this design with the price, the design is actually more than ok. Because the first time Techno made their color changing phone, it sold for 190,000 Naira. So iTel providing this same feature for less than 100,000 Naira, it is so commendable. But before I talk about the camera, these are the list of issues I have with this phone. 1. It is built on Android 12 and not Android 13. 2. It comes with a 10 watt slow charger that can take hours to fully charge the battery. 3. Since iTel S series is among the best devices from iTel, the S23 deserves a better processor than the T606. My last issue is that iTel should have considered an AMOLED display with a punch hole front camera. I so much hope that iTel will launch the S23 Pro and that will correct all these issues. Now let's go to the part which I think is the concern of everyone, the camera. Regarding this camera, I have a lot of questions I really want to find answers to. Will the night mode of the camera work as it does on other phones? Will the TC Sources processor that powers this phone allow the 50 megapixel camera to give its best quality? Let's find out. First, pictures taken in the dark. Not the perfect camera for taking dark pictures, other cameras of the same sensor will deliver better quality. But the night mode does work. It brightens pictures taken in the dark, giving it more details. With the flashlight turned on, it is so much better. This particular aspect of the camera is a go for me. For some phones within this price range, their night mode is no different from their normal mode as far as taking pictures in the dark is concerned. The fact that the night mode here can actually brighten picture by a significant amount is so encouraging. It has photo mode and portrait mode, but you don't get to decide how much blur you want with the portrait mode. So what you have on this camera is autofocus with no manual focus. You don't activate the 50 megapixel sensor the way it is done on other devices. In the camera settings, you only get the option to set the picture quality to either standard or high. Setting your picture quality to high activates the 50 megapixel sensor. Now, let's compare a picture I took with the standard setting and the one I took with the high setting. At first sight, they look the same. But when I zoom in, the one with the high setting retains more detail. In addition to the normal photo mode, it has a HD arrow mode and the Ultra HD mode. The Ultra HD mode gives better quality among them. It doesn't come with a slow motion mode and videos taken with this phone is not as clear as one would expect from a 50 megapixel sensor. It is better than other phones that I know of but iTel is not there yet. So when it comes to video recording, there is still lots of work to be done. At the front, it comes with an 8 megapixel camera with no control over blur effect. While portrait mode will blur the background by default, you cannot set how much blur you want. These pictures from the front camera looks great, but a 5 megapixel sensor will give the same quality if not more. This is a video I recorded with the front camera. This is the iTel S23 and I'm recording with the selfie camera. This is an 8 megapixel camera and I'm recording a high quality video at 1080p. Uh, I don't know how many frames per second because it is not specified in the camera or in the phone, but it can record a 1080p video and it can record a 720p video. And I can tell you right now that this video does not feel like a 1080p video and it does not give as much quality as a, an 8 megapixel camera. Some 5 megapixel cameras, I guess like the Redmi 12C 5 megapixel front camera will do better. But this is also great for iTel S23. If iTel has come this far then I believe that perhaps next year when they upgrade this S23 we might get a better front facing camera. But for now they are not quite there yet. I guess iTel simply use a 50 megapixel camera on this phone just to get the attention of prospective buyers even when they are aware that the quality will not even be close to the quality of a 32 megapixel camera. According to a nano review of the Unisoc T606 processor, the highest camera resolution the processor can handle is 24 megapixel, not even 32 megapixel. Also, the Antutu benchmark app detects a 12.4 megapixel camera and not 50 megapixel. It also detects 2.1 megapixel for video recording. 
Could it be that the camera sensor is less than 50 megapixel as ITEC claimed? Whatever the case, you will not get a high resolution picture from this camera. If the camera is targeted for normal day to day use, fine. But for those who create content with their phone cameras, like on TikTok and Instagram, this camera is not a good choice. Moving on to the display, it has an IPS screen of 720 by 1612 pixels. It has a 90Hz refresh rate, which will ensure fairly good scrolling performance. But the bezels in the display are a bit mush, especially if you have the bottom of the screen in mind. I think it is criminal not to mention that the display is very smooth when you swipe your finger across it. This is very important to those who play games like eFootball on their phone. When controlling a player's direction, the screen will not slow the movement of your fingers. And also, the screen is so responsive. Usually, ITEL don't tell about their display's touch sampling rate, and I'm so sure it offers nothing out of the ordinary. So what we have here is just a regular display that features nothing more than a 500 nit display brightness. Under sunlight, a user will struggle to view on-screen content. It has a 5000 mAh battery and a 10 watt charger in the box. Although the phone does not consume much battery because of its fairly efficient processor, charging its 5000 mAh battery from 0 to 100% is challenging. You will have to wait for 3 hours 14 minutes just to charge one phone. This is the part where I tell users will comment that I'm being too critical, it's just a budget phone, this is what we should expect. Guys, calm down, calm down. I tell P40 support 18 watt charging. Will somebody die if this phone is made to support 18 watt charging? So seriously, I have a problem with the charging system of this phone. As I mentioned earlier, it comes with an entry level processor, the Unisoc T606. But the Antutu benchmark app is detecting a little higher processor, the Unisoc T616. I will assume that the T606 processor is in use here and not the superior T616 because there's no possible way I tell we use a superior processor on a device and claim that that same device has a less performing processor. Whatever the case, the T606 has a value of 12 nanometers, which ranks it at the same level with the more famous Helio G85 processor in terms of power consumption. What this means is that the overall performance of the Helio G85 processor is better than this T606. But when it comes to battery drainage, they are both the same. I have operated other phones with this same TC sources processor and I can tell you that this ITEL S23 is very fast in performance. It opens applications and games on time and hardly overheats. In order to run the charging test I used in this video, I had to turn on flashlight, increase the display brightness to 100%, turn on the radio, data, play a game while other apps are open in the background running. In all of this, the phone did not overheat and it did not freeze. But this is not an assurance that after a while, after installing much games and apps, that the phone will not freeze and it will not overheat. It's a new phone and I have barely installed anything inside. Nonetheless, playing games on this device in this state is smooth and great. This is a test version of the Call of Duty Mobile. It takes about a minute to load and after that, it's perfect. The phone should also be able to handle eFootball and PUGB as well. I know that many of you would like me to compare this phone with the ITEL S18 and the ITEL P40. This is the ITEL S18 and this is the P40. Watch it yourself, do the comparison yourself, we'll meet there again.